think we can all relate to this, that, you know, Psytrance changed our life. For me, it was a big way, you know. This wonderful journey all started for me um, back in the year 2000. I was just traveling India. Goa had just planned to go there for um, a month, which turned into uh, nearly a year. Let's just go back, Hilltop. Um, I remember hearing the music for the first time. The kick drum was pumping, pounding, this, this tribal beat, everyone in, you know, kind of in the rhythm, in the groove, just hypnotized into this, into this, uh, this sound. This is really like nothing I've ever heard before. It blew me away. We went to the next party, one under a banyan tree, one's on beaches. I went back from Goa and I was, you know, it was impossible to go back into the normal environment. I felt like I'd been enlightened by this experience and 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 the people I've met and the places I've been and I was like I've just got to keep going so I kept going and I went to uh, Africa I went to the Zambia uh, eclipse in 2001 and that was life-changing it was all very 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 uh, very special time the first Samothraki life-changing on this island uh, um, no one knew what to expect and and that's when I first started to think, right, okay, I started to identify the artists and the music I like. The first person I really, like, you know, blew my mind of hearing was this guy called Tristan. I said, wow, this guy's got, this guy's got the tunes, you know, this is like, this is consistent music. Funny enough, six years later in the future, we would actually meet and that was also a very big changing point in my life. After all this happened, I went home after Africa and I was like, I want to be a DJ and I became a promoter and the way I kind of, I, I, I put myself out there as a DJ was to make the parties myself. So I'd make my own parties. I bought a sound system and we'd make these illegal raves in forests, really underground squat parties in London and warehouses that go on for days. We used to be called Party Possible, and you know, we, it was uh, it was very special times. The people in these parties, and I had this sound system, and I'd play at my parties. That's how it started. I'd play, I'd DJ at my parties. I'd end up, you know, booking some people to play at my parties, uh, and then they'd book me to play at their parties. And then it got to a point where I was like, I don't want to be a promoter anymore because I want to be, I want to get just more only into the DJing. And then I stopped making my parties and just started DJing for a while in the underground scene in London. And that's really where I got my sound, basically, was in these illegal raves that, uh, that would be happening. And it was, a, it was a beautiful time in England. There was so many illegal raves in the countryside. And it was for, we'd live for the weekend. These parties were amazing. And then I met the Wild Things, um, which really changed everything. And the Wild Things were Beardy, Alex EVP, Spiny, these guys, you know, took me under their wing. They signed me to their label. I met Alex. He really loved my DJ sets, Alex EVP. He taught me how to produce music. We then ended up actually making a track together. It went so well. He, we then formed a project, Reality Grid. An album together, we toured the world for years. This is all before Avalon, you know, I was making nighttime, funky nighttime music. And then um, I made the decision that I wanted to uh, change um, the style I was doing and make a slightly slower BPM, not much slower, just a couple of BPM slower and make somewhat of a full on psychedelic daytime sound. And that's when Avalon began. And it was a hard decision because I, I had to, I left Reality Grid. I wanted to do my own thing and I started Avalon and I had to start from nothing. I got to a point where, um, yeah, I was about, you know, to quit and just to have it as a, as a hobby again. I, I met Tristan in a really cool party in Bristol, Tribe of Frog. I was DJing, he was DJing after me, so he was just waiting to go on stage. And he says, waiting, and as he's sitting there, he's hearing me playing the, these few Avalon tracks I'd made. And he come up to me and I think I played Out There, which was actually the track that changed my life in a way. I got signed to Nano and became a big hit. And Tristan heard it for the first time. He's like, wow, what is this? I said, it's my new, one of my tracks, new ones. He said, who are you? I said, Avalon. He's like, never heard of you, <laughs> which he wouldn't have. And then he, he said, wow, you've got to come with us after. He came up to me again, what's this? It's another Avalon track. He said, come to the after party in this kind of mad mansion in the countryside where we partied for days and had this, I met all the Nano guys. It was amazing experience. And I pretty much got signed the next day. Nano, which is, you know, one of the 
the, my favorite labels uh, with my favorite artists on it. Suddenly it gave me the confidence and, and it gave me the motivation and drive to really give it everything I've got to do this. And that's what pushed me to finish the first Avalon album. And, you know, and then it, it developed and then Tristan said, look, I want to make an album with you. Well, let's start a project. It just, you know, you can imagine like your favorite artist when you're a teenager and you're like 10 years on in the future, you're not only uh, one of your best mates, he's become one of your best mates, but you're in a project together and you're on stage together. If someone said you in 10 years, you'll be on that stage at Samothraki together looking out, I'd never believe you. We made two albums together and we've done two remix albums together and we traveled the world and he's been my partner in crime, a brother from another mother, whatever you call it. We've had the best times ever together and it's, it's been a really beautiful journey. There's nothing like psychedelic trance and the psychedelic trance culture, the community, the people, and, uh, and I love it. And I'm really happy to, so happy to be part of it in some way and contributing to it in some way. And this, this means a lot to me. So yeah, this is where the magic happens. This is where I spent the last three years making the uh, second Avalon album. <laughs> Just kidding. So welcome to my studio. This is where it all happens. Speakers I have, the 15 inch sub under the desk, which you can't see, actually feels like you're on the dance floor. So when you're making the music, it feels, it feels like you're actually on the dance floor, which is what you want, I think. You want to have that vibe where you feel that it, it, what, what you get an idea what it's going to feel like as if you were playing it out at a party. And I think that's really important. But to also have the precision with the studio monitors and the accuracy uh, with a treated room like this, you know. Um, so you want the best of both worlds and with the ATCs, which is what I'm using, uh, ATC 45s and the 15 inch sub C6 is, for me, is the perfect combination. A lot of my inspiration has come from uh, being on the dance floor uh, at the festivals and, and all the parties. It's uh, very important to me to um, to feel the music on the dance floor, not just my music, but just, just to feel to the actual party experience. Because I'm away touring so much, uh, I don't have enough time to spend in this zone. With Tristan, actually, we did a lot of our album in hotel rooms and aeroplanes together. We both got the headphones on and we're like buzzing, jamming on the plane together and coming up with ideas. And then we take it back in the studio, all the material we've made on the plane, all the sounds we've twisted and manipulated and, and arrangements we've done on the aeroplane or when we come back to the studio we actually turn it into into uh, a full-blown arrange for, for, for a track and I think it's making the most of the time on your travels when you're waiting when you're touring you get inspired at that tour which is really cool because you know you've just walked off stage and you go back to the hotel and you can't sleep because you're so buzzing from playing to this thousands of people or hundreds of people whatever size from a good party and then you just, I bet a lot of the times I'd stay awake and I'd, right, I'm gonna do three hours in Ableton, which is the software I use, and just make music. So that is the main uh, melodic lead in the track with Adja. I've done many takes on, recording the live automation and getting the sweeps right with distortion and saturation, and I'm using a uh, rate reducer uh, distortion. You know, when you bring it up, in the sweet spot here yeah. we've been talking about doing a track for a long time and uh, it was hard to try and be in the same place as each other because his tour schedule is very busy and mine is and you know, the only way to do it was we uh, looked at a lineup in a party and we're like, right, we're playing at the same party. Let's, let's make a track uh, when we meet up at this party. And it was in Russia and we, uh, we ended up in, um, in the ho turning the hotel room into a studio. It's a very great combination, me and Adja together actually, and I really enjoyed working with them. And it reminds me of like sunset at a festival. Um, you know, you're at Boom, Azora, the sun's setting and you've got this vocal, this track's like, you know, the, the moment where it's just like, oh, you got there, the set's built up to this moment and it's like the, the tail out of it. And uh, I found, I thought, right, it's, it's a good vocal, but then when I found, I got this vocal and I transposed it to the octave higher and I put the two together and you get something really quite special. 
reality now is starting to talk. These two together. And it's, it's creating a vibe now. I've got lots of layers. I've got like three or four different layers all building with the cutoffs, filters, and all moving in and out of each other, creating the power. You can't even hear some of them. They're just underneath layered, but they all form one big monster of a line. I think there was like 160 channels to, for, to mix. It was an absolute uh, mission. Balancing uh, over 100 channels, I mean 150 channels of different sounds which in psychedelic trance is quite normal. I've got the ocean right outside and it's so nice just to go there, clear my head, look into the sea, chill out and then come back here and, and, and get back involved. I think it's important to rest your ears and it's nice just to walk across there and just look into the ocean and lose myself for a bit and then come back in here and blast it out. <laughs> I've been really uh, recently uh, returning more to my roots, uh, which is more sort of underground uh, psychedelic stuff and what I mean by that is music that doesn't stop uh, and go into triplets and and I have done no triplet drops on this album I'm, I'm done with that sound that sound still really works at parties especially in some countries but it's not where I'm at right now and it's not what's really making me dance I really wanted to bring in uh, visual artists um, to have an AV experience, an audio visual experience for the album. So I've cherry picked my favorite visual artists uh, over the years and each track will have a different visual artist and the visuals are created for the track. Uh, Global Illumination, Tass, and he makes unbelievable visuals. I think uh, everyone would have seen him doing the visuals at Azora, boom. John Speaker, he's from Colorado and he's a visionary artist and he does some amazing psychedelic paintings. I contacted a guy called Andrew Hunter who can take uh, paintings and then make them into visuals and I wanted to do a collaboration between the two of them because I've seen it before and it was really really awesome to take uh, John's uh, artwork and then uh, for Andrew to put it into the visuals and work his magic on it and the two together it's a great combination fully psychedelic when you listen to the album you'll have a whole journey of uh, different visuals for each track sounds moving to the music and you're, it's going to be a whole experience. Whereas before, 10 years ago, we didn't have the technology uh, which allowed us to create such amazing visuals. I mean, you could create visuals, but the, things have really advanced, especially in the last few years. And I wanted to bring that into my album um, and to embrace the sort of both technologies, not just the music software advancing, but also the visual uh, software and the animations. And I'm very excited to have all the artists working with me for each track. And it's been, it's been a real mission to get it all together, but it's, it's, I'm really, really excited about it all. The art for my albums, my favorite visionary artist, Anderson de Bernardi. It's a real honor for me uh, to have these very talented artists involved. It's been um, 10 years of that, and because it's, it's been nearly 10 years since I've done my first Avalon solo album. I've been very busy making singles and EPs all the time. I've done two albums with Tristan and four albums if you include both remix albums we've done and I've done two Avalon remix albums but as a solo album it's been nearly 10 years and I've been waiting for this time. Uh, I've, been, I've been rising up built with all this, gathering all this inspiration um, from uh, travels and, and, and the places, beautiful places I'm seeing and the people I'm meeting and the experiences and the other music I'm hearing on the dance floor and all the collaborations I've been making over the last 10 years with, uh, with a really talented artists. In fact, the, some of the, the, art, the artists that inspired me in the first place to do this. And I've been rising up and building it all up to this moment now to create my second solo album, which is Rise. And I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>